I was fresh off of the best marathon training block I had run up to that point. I just kind of decided on this arbitrary goal of 10 miles a day for a whole month. Five days before May hit, decided to do it and went for it. Day one. 10 miles a day for 30 days. 4.45 a.m. Let's get this. I just wanna see it all Staring at my crystal ball Read the lines across my palm Dreaming, am I dreaming? Fall through space and time I just need to see the sun Leave the unknown behind I'm searching, I'm searching to wrap up the first day and I have no idea how I'm gonna maintain this for 30 days straight. It's gonna be incredibly hard. Did I die? No. Did I poop myself? Maybe. I guess that's uh, one down and 29 to go. Day two. Being in Chicago in the height, the first two months of COVID, everyone was on super high alert. So I was wearing a balaclava. I didn't even have a mask at that time. Uh, masks really weren't a thing yet. I didn't care so much, but you know, I didn't want to make other people feel uncomfortable. So that's a big reason why I wear the balaclava. And even on hot days, <laughs> in the middle of the day, I would wear it and it just became kind of unbearable in some senses. The heat, I'm wearing a balaclava, 65 degrees outside. It's the only way I could justify going shirtless though. It was too hot, it was just like making my head sweat way too much. Just kind of running around with that and people were really weird, like not coming near me. I had one guy cuss me out because I got too close to him and it just made me really anxious to go out and do this. Honestly, I wanted to do it early in the morning so no one would be out and I you know, didn't have to be around people. Day four. I'm not sure sub eight is gonna be possible. Legs are feeling very tired. Gonna keep trying though. Just finished mile seven, but I am on the struggle bus. Still maintaining pace for these last three. Gonna be very difficult. Gonna suck down my recovery smoothie when I get home. Try to stay off my legs the rest of today. Having time at the cabin out in the middle of nowhere was so helpful because there was literally just nobody around. I didn't have to worry about that component. And it just gave me this outlet during that time of so much uncertainty, especially being an entrepreneur, you know, running my own business and not knowing what was next. It gave me some sense of physical stability throughout that month and something I could latch onto that was consistent. Day seven. It wasn't hard for me in the sense that I could kind of run whenever I wanted each day because my work life had slowed down so drastically, everything being canceled, I tended to try to run in the middle of the day. The reason I love running in an urban environment is there's just always things happening. You see a ton of things. You're dipping and diving and dodging. You're always trying to run around people, a, a car that gets in front of you, or like swerving in between people. And I just see that as really fun and engaging. The relief of getting out of that during COVID was so nice because then, you know, my family had a place to just like, you know, be outside and hang out and just have more space with less people and less to worry about. And the flip side of that was 
It was so boring out in the fields. Like there was nothing there and I would run for miles, a straightaway for miles along a country road with just cornfields on either side of me. But the challenges that that brought to were the, the wind across. The crosswinds and headwinds that I faced on those roads were so brutal. This crosswind is insane. It's gotta be 20, 25 mile an hour winds. I'm about to round the corner to a new road and I hope to God that the wind is better but I don't think it's going to be. I actually think it might be worse. There were red-winged blackbirds that would chase me every other day. These red-winged blackbirds are conspiring against me. Get them. There was quite a bit of rain, quite a bit of wind, and um, some of the days were really cold as well. So a lot of those were really challenging, especially in regards to getting out and feeling motivated to run because I knew some of those things were the case. So much so that one day I knew there was a super strong wind and so I researched where it was coming from, if it was going west to east, and it was. And so I had my buddy Mike drive me all the way 10 miles west, and I just ran east with a back wind the entire run, which helped significantly that day and overcome that, that mental barrier to like get out and go do it still. Bye. Bye. See you on the other side. See ya, don't die. I'll try not to. Don't get picked up by anybody in weird looking vans. Just run into the field, even though they could probably come get you there. Oh, that's not very fun to watch him go away. Day 15, halfway. Oh man, I feel like a baby deer. Oh my gosh. I mean, then scientifically, of course, you know, throughout the month, putting in that volume really got me in shape. So the second half to even the last week, I was really running way more efficiently than I was in the beginning. Maybe I'm just getting, be getting better. Maybe I'm just getting faster, more fit. Maybe. I don't think there was ever a point where I wanted to give up and not run. There were a lot of times where eight minutes a mile felt not possible given the weather, the wind, um, how tired my legs were. I think those were the, the biggest challenges I faced in the process was um, maintaining that level of pace, which looking back and, and being the runner I am now and how much more I know now is really silly. Like that I forced myself to run under eight minutes a mile for every single mile. That was also just a component of discipline that I did really enjoy. There were some miles that literally went 755 and I was right on the cusp because it was uphill and windy and cold. My wife was so on board with me being able to do it and taking the time to do it. And even more so because I was spending so much time at home, way more than I ever do. So in that regard, she was just like, yeah, please, like, please go help yourself and have this thing to hang on to. We had plenty of conversations about how that stabilized me so much um, through that time period. Mike especially, he would come out every once in a while on these runs and just like interact with me in a way that felt really welcoming and warm. And running is an individual sport. You can have a team, you can have people you run with, not negating any of that. In races, you're obviously running alongside people, but at the end of the day, you're competing against yourself. Your goals need to be personal. Everybody's anatomy is different. Everyone's natural heart rate is different. Everyone's body fat percentage is different. Like everybody is very different. So if you're constantly comparing yourself to other people who are faster than you or slower than you, it's not helpful to your process. So you need to evaluate where you are in the running world and where you fit and what you want to do to challenge yourself, compete against yourself, ultimately find a lot of value and success in the hard work that you are putting in. The comparison game is not a fruitful one. Unless you're an elite competing for those races, which a lot of them are running around the same pace, there's really no reason to compare yourself to other people. For me, what that looks like is continuing to increase volume over time. For me in 2023, I wanna be running upwards of 3,000 miles on the year. I've never even crossed 2,000 miles on a year, but I think this is the year where I wanna stack three marathon blocks really on top of each other, maybe doing another massive month like this and taking all the precautionary steps to keep my body uh, in check and safe. and maybe whittle myself down to a 250 or 245 marathon. Now, if I wanted to compare myself to the elites of the world who are trying to qualify for the Olympic trials, I'm nowhere near that. You know, I'm nowhere near some of my friends who are running 230s in the marathon, but I know that's not possible for me right now. For yourself, if it's something that you're wanting to get into, then it's, it's recognizing where you are, having different stair-stepping events of seeing what your fastest times are at certain distances and working from there and 
doing the best you can to get aerobic miles in, building your base, continually showing up day in and day out to build that volume for yourself so that you can race the fastest you can on race day. So that's the technical part. The emotional and mental part is that just, you know, this outlet is incredible. Like the endorphins you get from running and the way you feel from doing this thing that can be so monotonous is highly rewarding in so many other parts of your life and it is for me and that's ultimately why i keep coming back to it it's like it's, it's just rewarding in a, a multitude of, of ways and that's what gets me stoked about running Five, 65, 41. <gasps> I can't believe it.